fire steam assault. Specs on, gentlemen. Gooby dooby doo. Oh no. Run away! Okay, Venus. Okay, Steve. Oh, oh wow. we continue. Done it again. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson, Richard James, and Chris Dale. It's the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Hurrah! It, no, it really is the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Yes. Things might look a little different this week. No. Oh, because yeah. we're in close proximity. We're this in week. close proximity, which yeah. means there's a little space on the other side of the table for you know who. Well, not much space. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> Happy Hi, to be here. Hello. Oh, Chris, it's lovely oh. to have you around the table. Well, long have I dreamed of sitting at this table for something other than an interview. Yes. Not really, no. no, not really, no. Thought not. Can you think of two things that are coming up in this week's podcast, Chris? I certainly can, yes. We have the randomizer. The fear what are you in his shaking eyes? your head? I just, this is so exciting. <laughs> somebody yes. else, you know, normally I'm doing all the heavy lifting in this bit, so. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> it's quite nice to have And we else have everyone's over. favourite Fab Facts, but in a slightly different format. Yeah, that's true you might be used to. You'll see. Yes. Stick with us. Can you think of two other things that we have coming up in this week's podcast, Jamie? Uh, <laughs> well, hopefully yes. we'll have some Podster on emails or messages. Absolutely, because they've been emailing in, in their droves oh, podcast at jerryanderson.com. Uh, and maybe a guest? We do have a guest. I the guess. amazing Mark Silk is joining us. Man of a Thousand Voices. And finally, we have some newsy news, news, news. Yes, I know many of our Podstrons will be very pleased to hear that the Jerry Addison news is back does, does that every mean, week. Does that mean you're going to sing? No, I, I might even sing. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think it's time before we head into the randomizer and all three of us oh, watch a random a episode randomizer. of a random what? Jerry Addison three series. Three of us? What's going on? This Let's see the, how random. Mark Silk got on with super identification and let him press the big red button. Hello. I'm Mark Silk, and Anderson fans might know me for... I'm the new voice of Troy Tempest, so... Okay, Marina, let's go. Fire Steam Assault. The new voice of... Steve Zodiac in Fireball XL5, so... Okay, Venus. Okay, Steve. Right, let's go. The <laughs> new... Well, the, the, the original voice of Captain Wayne Rigby in Thunderbirds are go, so it's uh, all very cool, with lots of big ton eyebrows. Thunderbirds are go. <laughs> and... And, and and the stacks of other stuff, which I'm sure we'll get uh, to. Amazing. I mean, I think we could just end the interview right there. We've is got that, value for money okay? already. My credentials. Uh, Mark Silk, welcome back. Thank you, I should Richard. Say, to the Jerry Anderson podcast. Oh, thank you. Now, last time it was audio only. Where did you do that uh, interview? That was, do you from, that was from my studio in, in Solihull, ah, Birmingham. Okay. Yeah. And, and now we're actually in person. We are in person. I have alcohol gelled myself up and I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you've got over a hundred... I counted them, IMDb credits for your voice and acting work. That sounds really good. Are there any of them? And this is a tricky question that really stand out for you. Yeah. Go on, then. Well, it's it's well, I, I worked with George Lucas. I'm a massive Star Wars fan. So is it, is it like a name drop counter? Like yeah, the, gone. Yeah, so I worked <laughs> with George Lucas on, on Phantom Menace. So a huge Star Wars fan. And to get to work with him on that, I play a character called Axmo. So he's like a... He looks a bit like Ryu from the earlier films. Oh, yes. But it's like a goat's head, three eyes, and a desperate need for moisturiser. Right. So well, with him, there's a, a guy with extremely cool hair, almost as good as mine, called Johnny Bravo. Oh, mama. Okay. Where for four years I was the voice of that for Cartoon Network. Yes. Then if you grew up in America... I was for six years the voice of Bob the Builder. Yes. So I was the American voice of Bob. So it's like, hi, Bob the Builder here. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. How Come on, amazing. school, Mark Dizzy, let's go. <laughs> Today we're going to teach you how to build a concrete bridge, which is a real practical skill for a five year old, right? <laughs> and then there's uh, like Pingu. And, amazing. Um, like, so, did you watch the Pingu? Newt, newt. And well, what else we got? There's loads of stuff. I mean, the six year old you must be absolutely thrilled. Oh, I love it. So, what were you watching and enjoying as a kid? Do you remember? Yeah, I, I actually do. So it was Bagpuss, it was Trumpton, it right. was all the Cosgrove Hall stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was Muppets. I was in love with Muppets. Right. Uh, but I was in love with the Anderson stuff. Oh. And it's, well, what a coincidence. Yes. But uh, when I was at school, I was watching the reruns. It, it was mostly Stingray, it was Stingray... Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet. Now, previous podcast guest Kate Harbour, who I know you know well, yeah. um, told us that one of her sort of earlier formative experiences was was voicing as a kid the yeah. Muppets. Yeah. Did you do similar things? Did you voice your own characters? I'm not sure I did. I I, I was more I was more I was fascinated by the behind the scenes side of everything. So oh. my heroes were often people. 
um, on the other side of the glass, on the other side of the studio. Yeah. So my heroes were people like um, Derek Meddings and Barry Gray right. and David Graham I and see. Shane Rimmer okay. and Jim Henson and, yeah. and Mel Blanc. And yeah. So it's, it's often the people that you didn't see in front of the camera because I love – it's a thing of like I loved magic, but the thing I loved more than anything was to figure out how the trick was done. Yeah. So it was – to begin with, the, the thing I wanted to do was really work behind the scenes as opposed to on a microphone. Ah, I see. So watching Thunderbirds and so on as a kid, it wasn't the voices that particularly stood out to you so oh, much? Well, it was. I mean, right. it, it was. It was kind of everything. Yeah. Because Thunderbirds especially, it's so special. I watched, I watched another episode of Thunderbirds earlier just on the train in and you know, when they're moving the Empire State Building. And they were, they were movies. It was, it was so much Grander and yeah. grander, grandiosa, mm. grandiosa, mm. biggerer. Sounds like a drag name. <laughs> yeah, starring, yeah, <laughs> grandiosa. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but it, it was so much bigger, and and yeah, this bombastic Barry Gray music. Those voices too were. I mean, the the voices. When you unpack what they were doing with those voices, the casting, the performance of those characters. They were they were movie like performances. Mm. They weren't kids TV shows. Yeah, they exactly. were movie performances. Yeah, you know, the, the the special effects. You know, when you got the same guy that worked on Bond, who did this beforehand, yeah. that says a great deal. There was, was just some the, the quality, the lighting, the music, the sound design, yeah. everything. It stood out from anything else that was on TV. I fell in love with that. Now let's put your memory to the test, then, Mark, as we play a little game that we like to call Super Identification. Oh, golly! I'm going to play you very quick clips from each of the opening credits okay. to every Jerry Anderson series. Okay. Let's <laughs> see how many you can name. Shout out when you see Uh-oh. one that you know. Okay. Ready for this? Mm, yep. Is it Four Feather? <laughs> What's this? Four Feather Falls. Hey, four Feather Falls, you think? Or Torchy? Oh, boy. Oh, hold that oh thought. My. Next. Oh. That's... Oh, that's next. Not, that's not Fireball, it's Torchy. Ah. That, is that Fireball? No. What? You said no, it was what, already. What? No. Fire... This is very... Supercar. Early. Well done. Fireball. There you go. Redemption. Stand ready. I think we're on fire I'm ground. kind of like that. <laughs> Stand by for colour. Thunderbird. What could it be? Argo. What a hero. Captain Thingy. Yeah. Captain Scarlet. <laughs> Joe. Joe Knighty. For hypnotic secret service. Yes, well done. You got that one. Only picking. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You are you a foe? Yes. Bit of an outlier, this one. Well, what? Space 1999. Yep. This is an emergency. Terrorhawk. That's it, you got it. Dick. Well done. Spanner. Yeah. Space police? Yeah, close, yeah, close enough. Lava the Castle. Yeah. And finally. Oh, uh, New Scarlet. New well Captain Scarlet. Yeah, okay. No, oh, what did I get? I'm, not I'm, bad at all. Not bad at all. Mark. Yes. I can reveal exclusively you've got 14. Wow. Uh, which isn't bad at all. Out of 50? Uh, I think, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you struggle with the earlier ones there. Yes, yeah. Twizzle we had at the very beginning. Yep. Then Torchy. Four Feather Falls you got, but out of order. Yeah. Well, my... Rather hastily scribbled 14. It's very A slight impressive. amendment made Beautifully there. Beautifully done. Due to miscounting. Yes. Uh, no. Now... I need to ask you to do something very important now with oh, the super identification. The Most important of all, this is the big red randomizer button. It's very impressive. This will set the episode that we watch for the rest of this week's podcast. Oh, great. So it's a big responsibility. It's huge. I simply want you to slap the button. Well, thank you. Over to you, Mark yeah. Silk. Put it in the right position. And three, two, one. Oh, what's it going to be? Oh, come, on, come, come on, Mark, do us proud. Oh, please. <gasps> It's oh, Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds! How nice! It what a had treat. to be. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's Peter Peril, which was the second episode of Thunderbirds. Second episode, I think. yes. Uh, yes. First broadcast, 7th of October, I'm going to say 1965. Am I about right? I'm going to go with what you say. I don't have that level of detail in well, my noggin. That sounds accurate to me. But of course, it also features Jerry Anderson royalty in the name of Shane Rimmer, Matt Zimmerman, uh, Peter Dinley, David Graham. So let's watch Thunderbirds. Pit of Peril, Ooh. part one. Oh, wow. Specs on, Jamie. Specs on, Richard. Second episode of Thunderbirds, and we open with some lovely stock footage. Uh, this doesn't look very Thunderbirds. No. Unless that's the work of Derek Meddings. That's not. It's not. 
I, I remember first watching this, watching it as a kid, and always thinking the stock footage kind of stood out and felt a bit weird. See, I felt actually the opposite. I, I loved the stock footage, and I felt that the shot of the helicopter was real. Because I was, I, as a kid, I was just so into it. Uh, I'll have to disagree, I kind of Chris. This stuff. Sorry, all these animals, they just take me right out of Thunderbirds. Oh. It's a little bit Secret Service, isn't it? Do you what, think? With the live action monkeys <laughs> yes. uh, you almost and crocs. Almost expect. Um, Look, there's a Model T going past in the background even now. <laughs> yes, exactly. Almost expect Father Unwin to pop his head around. I'd, I'd love to know where all this came from because it's obviously some nature documentary footage or something. But the music really. You know, there's some elephant sounding music. And then we get the big monster. Oh, we're watching Bambi, aren't we? Oh, look at Bambi! <sighs> Wow. Now, this is interesting because we don't actually see this machine for quite a while. It really builds up the suspense, doesn't it? And all our characters here are now in danger. They've all got to run away. Run away! To be fair, it is very good use of the stock footage. Mm. I will give them that. Yeah, it is. But when the little legs come in and, and stamp down... Yeah. Uh, as much, I, I, by the way, I feel like I'm already slagging this episode off. I'm not in the slightest, because <laughs> uh, I really love it, and it's my most watched Thunderbirds episode. Is it now? Yeah, Chris, I've watched it for years. But how many times do you think you've seen this episode? Well, being the second episode, you sort of see it every time you rewatch Thunderbirds. So I would say at least half a dozen times, probably. Okay. So no surprises coming up for Surely you. Surely, I think he's massively underestimated that. It's like a monster from another planet. Oh, that's interesting because have... you're like a monster from another planet. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but again, although we've seen some army guys now, we still don't get a full view of this monstrous machine. Just get this lovely music. There oh. it is. I mean, a strange and difficult machine to animate, I would think, with those uh, yeah, legs. Yeah. And people keep asking for toys and models of it, and it's like, well, where would you even start to create yeah. something that will stand up? I mean, I think I would have put it on caterpillar tracks. Yeah, but then it wouldn't have worked as well, would it? Yeah. Wouldn't have been dramatic. No, fair enough. But uh, this episode is not the first time that viewers would have seen the Sidewinder because photos of it appeared in the Stingray comic oh. um, before this episode aired. <gasps> right. Yes. Uh, Ross, stop that for a moment, please. Because I think... Am I in trouble? That's a fad fact. <gasps> yes. Do I win a prize? Carry on. No. Oh. How did she handle? Like a breeze. Nothing can stop the army now, sir. Famous last words. Yes, and that's good. We, we want the army to be unstoppable. The relief crew is on its way by Heligen. I really like their hats, actually. The costumes in this are kind of mm. cool. No, I think you've done a swell job. Aww. Oh, I like the little hoodies. It'll be good to have a rest. You yeah. head for rendezvous point nine. Now, I'm going to tell you a problem I have with these big-headed Thunderbirds puppets. Oh, yes? It's the eyebrows. Ah. The eyebrows never quite work for me. Miles are over. Oh, the Some of these early Thunderbirds puppets, yeah, are a bit, bit bushy. Keep springing up. He's quite a Deslinem looking fellow. Travel spot before they get too heated. That's it, Ralph. Oh. Uh, any Off come the glasses. Yes, sir. The helijet okay. is heading for point nine now. Great. Okay, Captain, take us back to base. Yes, sir. Peter Dinley's voice is just so gravelly and identifiable yeah. when he's doing a guest character. <laughs> Did he voice many parts in the series? Um, I'd say there's normally one every other episode. Mm. Yeah, it's quite infrequent. Well, I'd be glad to get back to base. It's weird seeing the sidewinder there without the, the big machine walking music. It suddenly oh. looked like much smaller, didn't quite it? Quite dainty. Yeah, the effect of Barry Gray's music. <laughs> yeah. And now we know it's a friend. Every day could drive a guy... And this guy was um, in the previous episode, as was this guy. They were the crew of the Fire Flash. Ah, oh, right, OK. It's so a reuse of puppets again. Yeah, it's a very quick reuse of puppets. Yeah. yeah. Are we expected not to notice? Well, I don't think viewers in the 60s would have, but... Oh. See how much more epic it feels with that Barry Gray music? Yeah. And those kind of pneumatic limbs as well, yeah. as it treads. Very clever. So um, that's held on wires, I'm guessing. Just somebody swinging... Oh, you mean the model or the, yes. just the leg on its own? The model. I'm amazed that it moves with only three crew, but uh, it's not going to be moving for much longer. Uh, oh, uh, got uh, some uh, some holes forming in the ground. Yikes! And a spectacular fall about to happen. Oh, Chris, you spoiled it now. <laughs> Don't jump <laughs> ahead. Who, who watching the podcast has not seen this one? Come on, there we go. Oh, no. oh, look at that. Oh. Lovely stuff. 
they have fallen into a pit. And not a pit of peril. Oh. Indeed, a pit of peril, <gasps> yes. Yes. Poor Sidewinder. Look at that lovely smoke. It's clever, isn't it? Against health and safety now, I imagine. Yes. <laughs> Amazing! So, we have entered the pit of peril. Oh dear. So do stay tuned when we'll be watching the rest of Peter Peril a little later on and see what happens to the mm. Sidewinder. Mm. Also, don't forget, we've got the wonderful Mark Silk coming up a little later on. And Janie, I think you might have a bit of a special offer for our viewers. Is that right? I do. In honour of Mark's uh, appearance today, Go on. you can save 20% on our Stingray hardback books what? and audio dramas really? using the code... Silky Mark. Silky Mark. That's S I L K Y M A R C. Yes, correct. All one word? All one word. All uppercase? All uppercase. Okay. So this is Operation Ice Cap and Monster from the Deep, isn't it? You are correct, Chris. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. Good knowledge. 20% off. And how long is that uh, particular offer live to our listeners and viewers? One week only until the 15th of April. Okay, great. Fantastic. Uh, now that sounded a bit newsy, news, news, news like to me. It did. Yes. Let's make it a bit more formal and okay. let's have. Some Jerry Anderson news. Oh, news, 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 news. That's news, very exciting, isn't it? Yeah, go on. That's, okay, I sort of missed it because, as we know, there's always something amazing happening in the Jerry Anderson universe. There is, Jamie. We haven't said it for a while, but yes, no, we uh, at the end of this week, yeah, Sunday, the 14th of April. Yeah, do you know what day that is? Is it Sunday the 14th of April? Yes, I know, but what do we celebrate that day? Oh, that's, that's Sunday the day the, the footage detectives is on. On Talking Pictures yeah. TV, yes, but also it was Dad's birthday <gasps> and has become known as Jerry, Jerry Anderson, Anderson Day. Day. That's yes. right. Thank you. I wish you'd just done that a bit sooner. Sorry. Uh, every Jerry Anderson Day we celebrate with fans across the world, all mm -hmm. things Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, and this year we have a bit of a theme. Oh. Which yeah. is to welcome new Ander fans. Love it. Far and wide. Nice. Yeah. Because, you know, we're quite geeky, nerdy, on this podcast and elsewhere across the Andalus. What are you that, implying? That's, I'm not implying anything rude, but it's true. Yeah. And we want to make sure that people feel welcome and able to join us however and whenever they like. Mm. Uh, listening to this podcast is a good way to do that, but we are giving people a free 12-hour live broadcast Ooh. on Jerry Anderson Day, which will run through twice, so wherever you are in the world, you can watch it. Wow. Okay. Uh, and I hear there is something special in between the, the two showings as well. You're absolutely right. If that is the 12 hour bread either side, the lovely juicy <laughs> filling. Oh, you're making me hungry oh. again. It's a live stream uh, hosted by Jack Knoll, uh, where we'll be covering all sorts of stuff, including some special reveals of upcoming Anderson goodness. Ooh, yes, it's okay. very exciting. Yeah. Uh, so you can pick up that uh, 12 hour broadcast from 7 a.m. on the 14th of April. Is there April. anything special in this live stream? Anything people won't have seen before? Yeah. Or heard before? Oh, you know, there is. There is. Well, well remembered, Chris. Right. Thank goodness you've said that. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad he joined us around the table and not on the sofa. <laughs> Well, he could have shouted it from across oh, yeah. the room. Yeah. Uh, also within that will be a new audio story Ooh. of UFO right. called Satellite Scare, read by our very own Nicholas Briggs. Amazing. Lovely. It's rather excellent. There's loads of treats in there. I mean, yeah. it's been programmed by the one and only Chris Dale, so you can enjoy that. That's it indeed. Wow. So lots of Chris Dale in it. Of course, it's oh, all about yes, Chris, really. Uh, but there's, there's a new primer in there. Mm. So there's a whole 20 minutes on everything all about Anderson. If you uh, haven't heard of Jerry Anderson before, I don't know why you've been listening to this, but mm. maybe there's things you don't know, mm -hmm. and you'll soon find out. Great. So there you go. That's nice. Jerry Anderson Day, 14th of April. Look forward to it. Also, yes. you know who my favourite little friend is? Oh, oh well, 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 it's nice. Nice. <laughs> No, I mean Joe 90. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> little little Joe, yes. we love little Joe, don't we? Yeah, well, I quite like Joe. I know Joe a lot 90. of people like Joe. Yeah. So what we wanted to do was make something available for Joe 90 fans. Mm. So way back in the day when nobody was worried about childhood obesity or diabetes, <laughs> uh, you could get Kellogg's Sugar Smacks. Oh yes. oh, yes. And if you ate all the Sugar Smacks in your local area, you could collect six badges uh, from Joe 90. Oh, mm. right. But not everybody got them. Uh, and they're very sad. And they're very sad about that. Yeah. So we have reproduced them. 
The whole set of six? The whole set of six. Wow. A lovely backing card. Gosh. Limited to 300. They're already on sale. They're about half sold out already, Ooh. which surprised me. Yeah, <laughs> it turns exactly. out there are Joe 90 fans out there, uh, <laughs> but you can get them now from the Jerry Anson store. Lovely. And I hear there's a, a rather nice trailer on our YouTube channel and uh, other social media channels making use of the original Joe 90 Sugar Smacks uh, advert from the 60s. <gasps> Chris, you're absolutely Who right. Put that together. I can only imagine it was a genius that put oh. that together. But Podstrons, were you there first time round in the 1960s? Do you remember watching that advert for the Joe 90 badges and the Sugar Smack cereal? Mm. Do you still have your original badges? Yeah, let yeah. us know. Yeah, podcast at jerryanderson.com. And finally, <gasps> I've left Ooh. the best till last. Actually, no, Jerry Anderson is pretty cool. Yeah. Have you heard the rumour about Stingray? Stingray? I hear it's... Uh... Sort of, I hear something rising. Really? Yes. Something is stirring in the depths. Yes. I think it might be an it's uprising saying. and it could be deadly. <gasps> oh no! Stingray deadly, deadly uprising. uprising. Yeah. Wow. Of course. Uh, what is now, this? Well, to celebrate Stingray's 60th anniversary, which is this year, yes. we want to do something rather special. And thanks to our new agreement with ITV, it means that we can create new stories oh. set in the original world, in the original universe of Stingray. Nice. So Deadly Uprising is a multi-platform release oh. with stories set across uh, the concert. Okay. Ooh, That's wow. where it all kicks off. Where yes. we have a special live performance mm -hmm. of the opening story, Deadly mm -hmm. Concerto. Uh, and then go into novels and audiobooks mm -hmm. and comic anthologies, comic anthologies which yes. contain multiple new stories all taking us through this incredible saga where Titan reveals his deadliest plan yet. Yes. Excellent. That'd be good. Look forward mm -hmm. to that. Yes. So more details of Deadly Uprising very, very soon. But I am very excited mm. about it. We've been working on it for months and months and months. Cool. Yes. And it's blooming brilliant. And we still are working on it. We? we still are, Chris, yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, more about that in the coming weeks. Uh, but uh, PWOR for Stingray 60th. Oh, PWOR. That'd be good. But I think probably that brings us to the end of this week's Jerry Anderson News. That was the news. Ooh. That was the news. Oh, we can tell he hasn't done that for a while. A little bit croaky, I'm a bit yeah. croaky, but a I'm A couple okay. of cobwebs yeah. came yeah, out there. Right. Still to come on the Jerry Anderson podcast, we've got our wonderful Podstrons who've been emailing oh, yes. us at podcast at jerryanderson.com, but as a special surprise this week, we'll actually be reading from some physical letters oh. that people have sent us care That'd of the Moxie nice Hotel change. here in Slough. Thank you, Podstrons. <laughs> but I think it's time that we turned our attention back to the randomizer, Chris. I'm very worried about the crew of the Sidewinder. Well, the uh, last scene, plunging over the pit of peril. Yes. Shall we see Would how they get pain? on? I think we should. Specs on. Specs on. <gasps> Uh-oh. Oh, no. They're not reading him. No reply. It's a bit like when I call my agent. Mm. <laughs> Literally like when I call my agent. The Sidewinder. They're all lying on the floor. Disappeared. What? And it is odd that they're lying on the floor considering the machine is on its side. That's exactly and what And then later rolls thinking. onto its back and they still stay on the floor. Yeah. But... Oh. Uh, I, artificial gravity? Could be, could be, yes. Gimbaled cockpit. <laughs> yes. Oh, I've had one of those. I wasn't expecting to say that today. <laughs> um, yeah, that bothered me as a kid. Yeah. And still now. Wait, there's a hole down there. Oh, I mean, a pit possibly. Well, yeah. Sidewinder. And do you read me? Come in, Sidewinder. The line of them saying it's disappeared, but not noticing the big plume of black smoke. Ah, mm. yeah. oh, yes, there is that. Look at the little hats. Oh, the little hats fall off. What's the paper they're holding? What oh, it yes. says on there? Yeah, no reply. They must be out cold. I hope it's only that. Or oh, dead. Oh, yeah. Not from the elite helicopter. Go ahead, helicopter. At rendezvous. Ah, yes. This is as one of the early episodes. One that was uh, made for 25 minutes and then they had to uh, pad it out with uh, 25 minutes of uh, additional material. Pad it ah. out, Chris? I think that's a little unfair. I, no, I think in this episode it is uh, entirely justified. I must admit, padding. I found it a little paddy. Yes, yeah, but we'll get when to it. I first watched it last time, yes. As our crew are finally about to wake up. Chris, for those who don't know the 25 minutes to 50 minutes story. Could you deliver that in 25 seconds or less? Yes, indeed. It was commissioned as 25 minutes. Lou Grade said, expand it to an hour. And Jerry said, yes. And then they had to go back and reshoot bits Sweeney, for... Sweeney, you're okay. Sorry, I always hear, sweetie, you're okay. Oh. Oh, so sweet. uh, yes, so they had to go back and reshoot material for, I want to say, the first 11 episodes. Quite a few. Yes. And the extra material would normally involve either a subplot involving characters, international rescue characters, just sort of spending time together. Or, as in this episode, you have um, 
a failed rescue before someone gets the idea of calling international rescue. Ah, I see. Okay. That's a bit more than 25 seconds, but yeah. never mind. We'll let you off this time. Good context, thank you. So it's something that was easily filmed, easily slotted in without upsetting the footage already shot. Yes. The heat is building up. Yeah, you couldn't stray too far from what had already been shot. That was no OK, Captain. Now, there's a little bit of a dolly wobble going on there, and that's a phrase I learned from Ronnie LeDrew. Mm, dolly wobble. Ah. Ah, the helicopter, that... because of the rotors, I think. Yeah. It's a little bit... Well, I mean, the helicopter doesn't have a roof, so, you know, yeah. you can't... <laughs> oh, yes. But it does have a roof there. Look, yes. it's... It's a nice model, though. It is. Which they then set fire to in a, uh, a photo story in a Stingray annual or comic. Really? Yes. Uh, they tried Ross, it. Ross, I think we need to stop it there because I think that. I've done it again. Was a fab fact. fact. Another one. Wow. Chris, you're so good at this. I don't know why I ever bothered. <laughs> right, so who's this arriving now? This is the relief crew. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, AKA several disposable characters. <laughs> so we all know what's going to happen to them. Yes. Oh, dear. Um, I think all of these. That, the relief crew stuff is all uh, additional material. Yeah. Yes, Captain. Yes, sir. Yes. What I'd like to know is how we got down here. Guess <laughs> Gravity? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pause. Bad driving? This whole pit seems to be on fire. We'll be okay for a while. The automatic cooling plant switched itself uh, on. Oh, good. Oh, right. The atomic reactor. There's the word atomic reactor. There's always one. Has to be one. Yes. So hang on. The Sidewinder is driven by an atomic reactor? Everything in Thunder yeah. is driven by an atomic reactor. Was the main and source of power? Fallen down a pit of peril? Yes. Answer. Sounds dangerous. Fuck sense, Lieutenant. The machine weighs 500 tons. No heavy lifting equipment could reach here. <laughs> no. Oh, can't so be got, got to be straight on a cigar, though. Yes. <laughs> that helps people think. Well, that's what Jack Noll calls them, the thinking cigars. They've uh, all got one. Yeah. Begging yes. your pardon, General. Ponderous. But I figure the first thing is to go down there and take a look. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Sensible. Yeah. You could try that. Because we can't trust their word to say that the machine is tipped over. We have to see it for ourselves. <laughs> Only to assess the situation. I and we don't have drones. Need. It's, it's too dangerous. You could be burned alive. We don't well, I never said I was going. Yeah, well, exactly. I thought don't as, as leader, you might uh, take, take the initiative. I just came there. up with the idea. <laughs> Very well, Lieutenant. Oh, all right. You go and burn to a crisp. Get pilot. And thanks. <laughs> thanks, oh, uh, thanks for letting me off the hook. Atomic reactor operating at normal, Colonel. Oh. Well, Frank, let's hope it stays that way. I have a feeling it won't stay that way. No. Going to say infamous line there. I'm going to attempt a reconnaissance. What's the temperature outside the machine? Hot. Gauge reads 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, not good. What's that in centigrade, Jamie? Hmm? What's 220 degrees Fahrenheit in centigrade? I don't know. Uh, 100? Oh! Help him to breathe. But it's not gonna <laughs> well, keep help him. help him when he's on fire, though. <laughs> Switching over to Lieutenant Meade's frequency, sir. So we can all hear him scream. Captain. I want us all to listen carefully. Okay. Meade won't get much time to talk. I right. haven't watched this. <laughs> For probably 15 years. No. And I'm, I'm getting the willies ahead of this. Because I'm, like, I, I'm sure I, there are some horrible screams coming there up. There are, yes. Yeah, isn't that amazing how impactful yes. that is? Quite harrowing as a child. So, Podstrons, let us know if you've ever got the willies watching an episode of Thunderbirds. <laughs> so, off he goes. Yep. There goes a brave man. There goes a dead, a brave man. <laughs> yes. Get the body bags out of the back. <laughs> we may need them. Uh, if we didn't know it was going to end badly, yeah. the music <laughs> just uh, gives us a little hint there. Yes. It's not going to end well. It's great build-up, though. Mm. God, you, yeah, you could easily do that acting. I could do that, couldn't I? Yeah. Who See? needs puppets when you've got Richard James? <laughs> and this Helijet model was uh, repainted and reused in multiple episodes. Ah, yeah. Boy. Handbrake ratchet sound. Oh, now his hands are the wrong way around, aren't they? That's quite no, difficult, that's, isn't it? Well, that's right. That was on the outside. <laughs> the whole room doing that. Everyone now. is doing it, yes. <laughs> and there we are oh, wow. as the uh, plucky volunteer yes. makes his way down into the pit of peril. We shall leave it there, but we shall return oh. to Thunderbird's second ever episode a little later on. But I'm now left feeling really anxious because I know what's coming. Yes. What? Do you mean another visit to Mark Silk? 
Yeah, I did really mean that, yeah. Right. Well, let's head on over and see what he had to say for himself. So let's talk about your Anderson experiences. Yes. Let's talk about Fireball XL5. Yes. And before we talk about it, let's have a look at a little clip. OK. <laughs> Open, preparing to release ISO gas. Gee, <laughs> those volcanoes are mighty angry and real burning hot. Careful, man. There's another eruption right beneath us. I'm this just in. On, Steve. But can you steady the ship? We're doing our best, Matt, but the blast winds are affecting our stabilizer. Well, just hold her as steady as you can. And releasing ISO gas. Venus, we establish lateral control. Got Nicely it, done. I'll Thank give you. us full power green on retro boosters. Full power green. <laughs> Matt, are you okay down there? Matt, come in. <laughs> Matt. It's very dramatic. Wow. Cloud of a billion lights, Fireball XL5. I just released ISO gas. <laughs> I, I thought you had, yes, just by the way you were sitting. Uh, so, Steve Zodiac. Yeah. Was that a voice you were familiar with before you were oh, approached? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, when I was at school, they repeated Fireball XL5 on, I think it was like lunch times. Um, yeah. so, so I'd come home from school and that was ready for me. And my only reason for existing that day was to go home and watch the repeats of Fireball. Right. So, yeah, and, and again, obviously black and white, but it didn't matter because the stories were so good. Mm. And, and it's it, the same with every, every what, every Anderson show that, that you love, or same with any show you love. It's great stories, great characters, great performances. Yes. And, and something that's really helped that stand the test of time, because it'd be very easy to throw that away as just going, it's an old bit of kids' TV. But the performances were so good. The stories are really strong. But the, the, it's the music again. It's always the music. It carries you yep, through. Absolutely. That's, the music's incredible. That's but yeah, right. yeah, so I used to come home and, and watch those. And, and um, I, I would say out loud in between sandwiches before I went back to school, I'd be, I'd be there actually going, doing the two voices, going, OK, Venus. OK, Steve. <laughs> right, let's go. <laughs> and, 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 it's, and again, the, his his voice, the way that he performed, the, the way that he performed Steve, it was slightly more showy than some of the later characters that they had. It was like, yeah. right, okay. let's go. Uh-huh. Almost like a radio DJ, <laughs> yeah, like right. this kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, Venus, right then, let's go. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting, I mean, I think Jerry himself said he never spoke down to his audience. Yeah. And uh, I think the voice actors, the designers, the musicians, the compo- no one was ever less than committed to these Series. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what perhaps sets them apart. They were. They all, it was all played straight. Mm, and, that's right. And, and again, you, you played straight, the, and the whole thing is done as real. You never talk down to them. You're all on the same level. Yeah. And again, that, that's. I think as a kid too, you respect that because you're you're being spoken to as an equal. Yeah. And you're getting drawn in in the same way that you, you get drawn into the stuff that your mom and dad watched. Yeah. Or you know, in, in my case, and um, and yeah, and, and it, it stands the test of time because of that. It's a tough gig, isn't it? Stepping into those shoes, though. People who've grown up watching and yeah, enjoying. Yeah, it meant it meant so much to me. Yeah, I mean, really. I mean, of course, it's like a th- it's work and nothing yeah. to do. But it's one of those where you just go, you just want to be in the room. Yeah, I mean that. It, it, <laughs> it really was because I'm I, I'm I'm so fond of these characters and shows. The certain people, you know, the thing where you go. What do you want to do with your day? Who do you want to spend time with? What do you want to be, you know, mm. getting up to? And it, it's this. Mm. So to be able to continue that legacy of those characters is is very cool. Any, any sense of responsibility at all in yeah. that? Or, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> as well, you know yourself, when you see a show and they get it wrong, yeah, well, there's a remake of something, or it, it might be a new version of whatever it is, and it's not quite there. If you're a fan of it, you actually care. Yeah, you're there kind of going, well, you want to watch it, but you kind of like. Yeah, yes, I'm gonna not like it. Yeah, it's, it's that. I, I I've had that with with. There's been animation shows that I grew up loving, and, and yeah. there's been reboots. Yeah, and like, it wasn't quite there. But but this, I, I think I I think you nailed it. How aware are you of, of feedback from the fans? Did they get in touch and, and let you know? Yeah, <laughs> let you know oh, yeah, the fans that? will let you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they've been positive. Yeah, they've been really positive about it because yeah. again, it's. Those original actors w- w- did those performances, and that's it. And what you do is you take on you're, you're taking on the same direction that they'd have taken on. 
when, when they created those voices. So the way I look at it is I'm not trying to do an impression of them. Of uh -huh. course it's going to be in the same place, but it's almost like they created the instrument and you're now being given the instrument and it's your turn nice. to play it. Nice. So you might play it slightly differently. Uh -huh. it, these are new songs to play, so they're going to be different anyway, yeah. so you can't copy them. But there's, yeah, so you, you're... In the end, you're, you're bringing, it, it's your performance, but it's still got to be that character. Lovely. And, and, and that way then, as a fan, you can walk away, you know, I, I can walk away proud of what we did and hopefully fans enjoy it too. Lovely Mark oh, Silk. What a nice He's chat. so nice. But he's just such good value for money, not that we paid him anything. That's no. why he's such good value. <laughs> <laughs> now, coming up uh, shortly, we have our wonderful Pod Strongs. Mm. But before we hear what they've got to say for themselves, let's continue our adventure with Thunderbirds, <gasps> Peter pick. Peril. Oh, exciting stuff. Here we go. Specs on. Hello. Finally. Off to see some Thunderbirds. Here they are. Oh, yes, although they're not going to do much for a while. What are we, sorry? 15 minutes in and we've yet to meet a yeah. Tracy brother. Does that feel longer than average until yes, we get to International so, yeah. Rescue? Because all they can do is just sort of observe, listen in. They can't really be part of the story yet. No. There they are. It's the boys. Yay. And I believe this is the episode with the uh, smallest uh, number of regular characters in it. Oh. Because we just have... Um, John, Scott, Virgil, Brains, Jeff. Um, this is also the only episode not to feature any female characters. It is, is it yes. really? Stop the tape. That's a fab fact. Hey. But it uh, is quite ghoulish watching the Tracy brothers listening to these people. Uh, yeah. Going to be horribly burned one by one. Yes. Oh. It's just rising. temperatures rising. <laughs> yes. Yes. I wonder why that is. Ah, uh, he regrets not taking his jacket off before he went down. <laughs> Shit. 220 feet down. Right. Someone had an obsession with 220, didn't they? <laughs> 220 degrees feet. Fahrenheit, 220 uh. degrees da feet down. Hold on, Lieutenant. You can make it. Uh. You've got 220 seconds to get out of there. <laughs> uh, down, down. 270 feet. Right. Jeepers, my blood seems to be boiling. Ah, oh, but I'm all right well, otherwise. That's a, that's a bit dark, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'll carry on. Too thick. Yeah. It's very judicious use of music again, isn't it? I hadn't noticed how absent it is. Mm -hmm. I'll only have a second. Be ready, Charlie boy. OK, sir. Yeah. Charlie boy. Here we go. I mean, I'd put him out now, really. Well, no, he's not complaining other than the blood boiling, so I'd leave him there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, it's only when they scream that you really oh, yeah. need to get them out of there. And even then, you can take your time about it, yeah. as Charlie does. No hurry. But look at the sweat on his forehead. Oh, lovely sweat. And they're just standing around waiting. Mm. Ah. I, I can see it. Um, <gasps> this is worth coming all the way for, just to take a look at it, to confirm what they already know. We sort of haven't learned anything new, have we, really? No. Except the melting point of puppets. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not a lot of tension there. What's, uh, a side eye going, what's going on. on? <laughs> yeah, that didn't oh, work. Dear. That really didn't work. Oh, he's in a terrible state. It was such a great plan as well. Here he comes. Such a great plan. We might do it again. Yeah, why not? Get a stretcher. Hurry, Sergeant. And uh, not an ounce of remorse or guilt or. Uh, Responsibility for having put him in danger. Why don't I shoot out there, Father? See if they want any help. Wouldn't take long. No, Scott. No. Nope. We can't go shoving our noses into this uninvited. <laughs> We're, we weren't filmed for the second half of the episode. We can't do anything until next week. International Rescue wasn't formed to rescue people. No, 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 no. no. Down here, I'm going to put Scott on emergency standby. Uh, emergency standby, though. That's, a, that's okay. nice. Yeah. That's helpful. What? So that's, this isn't an emergency No, yet. that's feet up with a GNT. They want our help. We don't want to keep them waiting a minute longer than necessary. I find this, Jeff's voice sounds slightly odd in this episode for some reason. Yeah, it's oh, slightly yeah. compressed or something. Mm. Oh, it's an invisible man. Could do it, sir. Take <laughs> Let it. me go down again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've still got one unburnt hand. It'll be okay. Oh, Get a dear. line. Haul it upright. Yeah, this is a bit too realistic um, for, for the kind of Thunderbirds that I like. Yes. But it makes for memorable Thunderbirds. Oh, yeah. This is, this is why all the, these elements that are now coming back to haunt me from yeah. 
my clearly harrowing childhood and yeah. watching this too many times. <laughs> I hope we see him well by the end of the episode. Nah. <laughs> really? No, no, no. Who cares? Anyway, you'll be needed here by the radio to give the necessary instructions to Sidewinder. Fair enough. Yeah. If we can get it upright. Oh. Atomic reactor down 20 points, Colonel. Down 20? That means... Not well, 220. We'll be warming up in here from yep. now on. I'd right. say so. Could take our jackets off, sir. <laughs> oh, no, no. Slip a line over one of the machine's legs. You the insane. temperature outside is up to 265 degrees. Yeah, I'll have to work fast. If yeah. I make it, we'll be able to haul I you up. I little universal Three. handheld mics. Mm. Maybe we can climb out of here. Wow. Will they will they climb out? Maybe it's, it's they can no climb more, out of there. It's no more daft than anything else we've just seen them try. <laughs> yeah. Well, Potstrons, you'll have to join us a little later on. Ooh. We'll see if they do manage to climb yes. out of there. Let's hope. But for now, I think it's time that we open the door and let in those pesky Potstrons. Oh, yes. Oh, come on in. This is the voice of the Potstrons. Yes, it's the voice of the Potstrons, where normally we read out some emails from our lovely listeners and viewers, oh, yes. but... Today, for a change, I have letters. Wow. Yes, actual physical letters. We've got one each. This is amazing. One each? Three letters? Here we are. Uh, If you would like to read out... Oh, that one, Jamie. Okay. Am I I doing this one first now? Go for it. Uh, Okay. This is from Chris McCarthy. Hi, Chris. Hello, Chris. Chris. Dear chaps. Hello. Thank you for that welcome. Uh, and who doesn't enjoy receiving physical post when it's not a bill? Yeah, well, that was nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, after hearing your plea on a recent podcast, I thought that I should try to satisfy your request, but I make no guarantees. Well, I'm already <laughs> satisfied by this lovely tangible bit of paper. Yeah, but then you are very easily pleased. Uh, they say that, yes. Uh, first off, yes, I'm a fan of most Anderson stuff, and I'm pleased that you and the rest of the team are keeping the spirit going. Fair enough. Well, we try our best. Uh, I have some memories of Supercar and clearer memories of Fireball XL5 and Stingray. I suspect they were reruns on the TV at the time. I also watched Thunderbirds, and that may have been original showings. So 65, very good. Um, The rest of the series I'm sure I saw when they first came out. I especially remember the excitement of the new, darker puppets of Captain Scarlet. Yes, Yes. with smaller eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. I never got to Terrorhawks. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, And I missed Dick Spanner. Right. Wouldn't refuse a DVD if I got accidentally one sent out to me. <laughs> right. Uh, well, That's so yeah, big, isn't wow. it? Interesting. Fishing um, I wish you a very belated happy Christmas. Yes. Wow. <laughs> very and then there's a little picture in this letter of uh, Jeff oh, Tracy in his yes. Santa outfit. There it is. And a slightly belated Merry New Year. No, it's way beyond slightly yeah, now, but, but this, is, this is dated in January. Yeah. Um, we'll just take that as happy Easter. Yes. Please find enclosed some 2024 calendars. Who says Excel is no fun? Wow. F.A.B. from Chris McCarthy. There Chris, you are, Chris. Thank you. Oh, thank one you. for you. Jamie. That's lovely. Right. One for you. Ah. Oh. One for me. How nice. There you go. Unfortunately, wow. it's too late to mark my birthday on it for this year. Oh, but, uh, no. Thank you very much for that, Chris. Oh, thanks, Chris. Uh, thank now, uh, I also have another one here for Chris. If you want to read Ooh, uh, this one out. What have we got here? Yeah. Yeah. This is so lovely. Isn't it? Uh, touching paper. Yeah. This one starts, <laughs> hi, guys. Uh, hi, guys. Well, hi, guys. Thank you. Well, you did say you wanted a letter through the post, so yep. here is the letter A. Oh, ah, yes. Nice. A for R, ah, yes. yes. You're very welcome. Looking forward to the concert. I have the hotel booked, the tickets booked, and just need to book the obligatory Indian meal out with fellow Podsterons, and we may even sneak in a succulent Chinese meal. Oh, oh don't yes. mention that. Why is he talking That's, about food? No. Succulent Chinese meal? Oh, oh, oh. Super excited. Keep up the excellent work, and PWOR, Steve. Oh, thanks very much, Steve. Steve. Thank yes. you. Oh, P.S. I now have a numb bum oh. from reading IG4 Stellar Patrol, Ooh. as it's keeping me on the edge of my seat. Oh, <laughs> so well, there so we go. Thrilled and apologetic yes, that reading a book that I have written bum. Uh, resulted in a numb bum. Sorry for the numb bum. Yes. <laughs> uh, and finally, I have a letter here, but also some photographs, so I shall show these as and when we get to it. Dear Jamie, Richard, Chris and team. Ooh. Oh, here. There they are. Hi, uh, some podcasts ago, you mentioned that it would be nice to receive a letter in the post. So here it is. Probably by the time you read it, not the first. True, but hopefully not the last. We'll see. Uh, the reason for sending you this letter, letter, other than to congratulate you all on your great weekly podcasts, is this. January, so again, going back quite some time, marked the occasion of my 60th birthday. 
Happy birthday. And my wife, knowing I'm a big fan of all things Jerry Anderson, took me on a mini location tour. Oh. We started at St. Michael and All Angels, a.k.a. Hewenden Church, oh, where the Secret Service nice. titles were filmed, and the building hasn't changed one bit. As my birthday fell on a Tuesday, there was a weekly morning service being held, so my wife and I went in and we were made very welcome. When I asked what brought us to the area, I explained about the Secret Service programme, which came as a surprise to most of the people that I spoke to. What? I took lots of photos and said I would send them a copy of The Secrets of the Secret Service, oh, which I will do in due nice. course. A book which you yourself wrote, Chris. I He's did, very clever, yes. Chris. So that's yeah. interesting. So I wonder who around this tape hasn't written a book. Virgil. Wow. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, after a lovely lunch, I was taken to Ipswich Road in Slough, which is, I know oh. you're all well aware, were the studios for APV Films, AP Films, from uh, Four Feather Force, The Stingray. I've included a couple of photos of the buildings. And then he was taken for an overnight stay at the Moxie. And there we oh, are. Oh, nice. The church. Ooh. Nice. Oh yes, the Protires building. There you go. Lovely. So and that's from uh, Lawrence Hutchinson. So thank you very much, Lawrence. Really appreciate Thanks, the letter. Lawrence. And also, I'll just say this rather cryptically, also appreciate the little gift you sent as well. We don't expect gifts from our podstrons. But we but do uh, accept them. But, but gratefully received. That was, that was a lovely gesture. No, we don't gratefully receive them. Uh, but, no, we do. We gratefully <laughs> receive that one. But what I mean is don't send anything else, apart from a letter. Or do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, all for now. Usually we read out emails, and we'll be doing that next week, so keep them coming into podcast at jerryanson.com. But if you want to slip a letter in the post, we wouldn't be averse to that either. But that's all for now. Mm. It's time to get back to the pit of peril and see how they're getting oh, on yes. with that pesky old sidewinder. Indeed. Ready, Jamie? Space on. So, having just sent one guy down the pit, do you know what I think we should do now? Uh, what, uh, th 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 think reconvene should... and think again? I sent another guy down the pit. What? Uh, what? what? surely do something different this time. No, 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 no. We could insulate him, couldn't we? Well, we could do, but no, I mean, don't why not have him just stand oh, on just a piece of metal? Have him hold on to something that yes. might get hot. Really hot yeah, at 220 brilliant. degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that ah. seems like a bad <laughs> idea. Yeah. We'll just stand around and watch again. Well, this is the army's bad ideas squad, I think. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so, so what is different this time? He's just on a hook. He's going to use the hook to hook it around the leg of, of the sidewinder. Of course he is. Which for this shot will suddenly be the same size as he is. Okay. Um, so the scaling is a bit off here. Uh, right. I doubt it better. But of course, when they were making these shows, no, they never no expected no. a bunch of. Um, bespectacled, people. bespectacled geeks <laughs> to rewatch it and pick holes in it, no. which is not really what we're doing. No. But you know, they're, they're fun observations, aren't mm. they? Rather than criticisms. I'm three hundred feet down. Can you? That was quick. Yes. Very much along the last one too. No. I, 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 I can't see much. What? Oh, oh because of the smoke. <laughs> I see. You're right. It's just smoke. Move it over, Charlie. Straight ahead. Come on, Charlie. We're all depending on you. Yell. And I have a feeling, or, or scream. Yes. That's not straight ahead, that's sideways. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling that that um, thing that Charlie uses, the, the lever control, was also used in I Trapped in the Sky know. and I think on Thunderbird 3 as well in some way. So. Uh, Ross, okay? stop the tape because I think that I've done is it another fab is fact. That oh, no. <laughs> I'm full of these things. <laughs> Let's go. A fab factlet. <sighs> okay. Yes, this is the scale issue. Um, What's wrong with that? Well... You think it's too big or too small? I think it's it's too small. Oh. Yeah. Potentially. You think that's the size of the, the cockpit yeah. versus the size of the legs? I don't know. Well, I mean... Let's see it. Come on, let's see it again. This didn't upset me the most. Ah. Oh. That may be more so, yeah. yeah. I see. The feet looked a lot bigger before. Yeah. <laughs> smoke pouring out, <laughs> out, out of him. Uh, <laughs> he's doing a Captain Brown. Do you mind if I smoke? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh dear. Oh God. Wind sharp. That's oh. really distressing. Quick. Yeah. <laughs> Get him up. Get him up, for God's sake. Ooh. Yeah. It's, it's those. Yes. Wow. And the the hands over the face. Just... And the smoke pouring out of him. Look yeah. how hot he is. But it was his idea. Wow. Oh dear. No one standing by with any kind of medical aid or no, 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 having no. learned from the last time. Alive. I'm still, still alive. alive. Well, that'll do. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best we can hope for. Oh dear. You take that as a win. <laughs> I also don't know how he gets into the helijet. Yeah, we cut away. Yes. That's how he gets in. Somehow <laughs> aboard, because it's only got the pilot on board. Reynolds and Lieutenant meet to base hospital. Unless the guy who was previously burnt is standing there waiting to let him go. So, we've got a line on the sidewinder. Yep. 
I don't feel like this is going to work, you know. I, I don't no. want to be a... A, a party pooper. Oh! oh. No, no, it didn't I fall see. back in. Just to be extra safe, let's fly the helijet back over all of that lovely smoke. Yeah. Winch the cable to the copter, pal. Oh, I see. Right, General. Winch the cable to the copter. Attach mm. it to the copter rather than to the helijet. Why couldn't the helijet just have pulled it out? Well, I guess the They've got to get the guys to the hospital. Uh, They've yeah. got to get the guys to hospital. Yeah. I see. That's right. Of course they have. So pick up the other guy. And off they go. Never to be mentioned again. Copter watchdog from helijet. Heading for base hospital, General. Right. Use all speed. Those boys need attention. Yeah. <laughs> At last. Get moving. When you're ready. Oh, We've got to get the sidewinder up its side. Hmm. Will they succeed? <laughs> uh, I mean, to find out. Well, sure, I don't know. Did. Talking about scale, then, how big is the sidewinder in comparison to that helicopter? Hmm. Quite a lot bigger, isn't it? From yes. What we've seen so far. Yeah, we've only got a line around one leg. Yes. So... I suspect I know what's going to happen. It's a bit like when you try and pick a spider up. <laughs> 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 It's not a game I often play, Richard, but... <laughs> Just me, then. Oh, dear. It's moving a bit. Go on! Yeah, I like some of these shots where it's, it's almost like it's a wounded animal rather than yeah. a machine. You do sort of get a sense of character with it, but uh, the little helicopter is still not strong enough. The music's in again. That means yes, a bad thing happening. Exactly. But bear in mind they couldn't see before from up there because they had to send people down. And Noise using his uh, knockies. Go on! Ah, the oh. line's gone! Ah, the line's broken! Yeah, but do we make it or not? Oh, uh, it moved a bit, but no, it's going uh, back. Clunk. No, that's it. Boom. That's really torn it. Sidewinder from Cap to Watchdog. Guess what? <laughs> what is your attitude? Not <laughs> magic, exactly, is this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to rescue There's us a on that? There's a million answers to that one. We sure a good try. There's only one thing left to do, General. Give up? I'll go down there and try again. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Come on. Two brave men have been badly injured in that pit. I don't know if I should risk another life. But we must keep trying, General. And you're clearly not going to volunteer to go down there, General. If only we weren't so darn far from civilization. We'd stand a remote oh. chance of effecting a rescue, but... Rescue. Only it's remote. Rescue? Rescue. That's the answer. Oh, yeah, we could uh. rescue them. Oh, yeah, we could yeah. actually rescue. You'd stop faffing about and rescue them. Right. And if anyone's in help. a position to rescue them... Calling international rescue. Ah, that's a long time before we actually that's get right. them doing anything. Yeah, that's it. Although it is nice in the early episodes that it does take people a while to remember, oh, yeah, there's these rescue people. I've heard of them. It's, it, it is in keeping with the... The early episode nature, but oh, I think this is reused from the first episode. Go ahead, John. Father, General Peters has just radioed in. Right. They do want our help. Oh, oh right. Oh, okay. Tell them we're on our way. Yes. Tell them we're busy. Got it's action stations. Thunderbirds are go. At last. Finally, they're Phew. on the way. Yay. Um, Yep. So, so, emergency standby is go and sit in the cockpit. Yes. Until Pretty I say so. Uniform, that <laughs> that could be hours. Yeah. Days. Yeah. You look comfy. Yeah. Until the stupid general realises, ah, maybe this is a bit too much for us to handle. Uh, so is that a consistent policy of international rescue only to intervene when somebody says, please come and help? Um, inconsistent. I mean, they're not normally spying policy. on people for as long as that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh well, we continue. That's the end of, of Pit of Peril for this week. Hang on. Wow. Have I got to wait a week to see what happens? I'm afraid yes. so. And Podstrons, you have to wait a week to see what happens as well, because we'll oh. be watching The Pit of Peril Part 2 in next week's podcast. Gosh, I can't wait. I can't wait either. No. Uh, what do we think so far? Marks out of five, I'm going to ask you. Uh, for the first half of The Pit of Peril. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with two because I, I think that that padding does kind of sink the uh, two. That two. is hard. That's I really think hard. I mean, that's a you know, it's a lot I mean, of. Many people would think that this is you know, the Thunderbirds is the peak of, of Thunderbirds Jerry is the peak. Uh, but this one, uh, two, I don't think this one is is too. Popular. I'm gonna be a little bit kinder. I'm gonna go three for this one. Okay. Okay. And see what happens next week. Well, I I'm gonna. 
force myself down to a three, to a three. but my nostalgia for it is so strong, I almost want to go to a four, but three, 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 for, is. three for padding okay. and consistency. Okay. So that's uh, three and three is six, that's eight out of 15 so mm. far. Ooh. Let's see if things improve next week. Thanks okay. to Mark Silk for choosing the Pit of Peril yes. and the randomizer. Uh, let's uh, pop on over and see what he's got to say for himself before we say oh, goodbye. It's time to answer some questions from our viewers and listeners, Mark. Wow. As you can see in our rather tasteful Space 1999 lunchbox. It's a very tasteful lunchbox. <laughs> we have, oh, I mean, so many questions for you. Uh, we're going to spread them out. So if you could just reach in and take yes. uh, just a couple. Yeah. Take yeah. just two, and then we'll answer so some more later. Printed. So there's one. Yeah. And two, oh, they're folded up. It's quite secret. Oh, yes, there you go. Right. Qu question number one, please. <laughs> From Paul Hyder. Hi, Mark. Hi, Paul. Oh. Very, very friendly. Oh, yes. Always. What's your favorite non Anderson franchise? <sighs> if I, had to, I, I well, it's between two. It would be between Warner Brothers cartoons of the 40s and 50s. Right. That I was watching reruns of when I was what, a kid. What, talking Looney Tunes? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Merry yeah. Melodies? Yeah, and... yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So uh, as a kid, same thing. Great, yes. incredible music. You know, full orchestral scores. Yeah. Amazing voices. You, got you your are despicable. That's this it. is the last time I work with someone with a speech impediment. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Mel Blanc and yeah, so Mel the Blanc. Great. You know, uh, the same guy do. I tried to a pudding tat. You bet you're for a pudding tat. That pudding tat of me. <laughs> and the same guy doing these little gentle voices was the same guy going, Say your prayers, you lump here, varmint. Or I'll <laughs> sm <laughs> smash your smithereenies. And, uh, and then, this, and then in the, like for Hannah Barbera stuff, he was going, yeah. But they tweet for it. Come on, Billy. Let's go. You know, he was everything. But so Warner Brothers cartoons, amazing art, but again, edgy. Like where Disney was beautiful, their shorts were beautiful. Yeah. But so it was between those or Henson. I see. So I was a massive, I, I just adored the Muppet show. Right. Because it was, again, great music. Yeah. Amazing performances. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brilliant characters. Absolutely. But same as with Thunderbirds, the same with, with the Anderson stuff. I was just probably more interested in how do they do it. And there was a um, there was a documentary called Of Muppets and Men that I saw when I was about ten years old, and you just saw the camera pull away from the shot you're used to, and it was this revelation of oh my uh, word, who's yes, underneath that? That's right. And it was it was fascinating. So I was so inspired by that. But yes, yeah, so Paul Hyder, hi Paul. I would let's go with Muppets. Okay. Because I have to have I have to commit. So let's say yes, Muppets. Very good answer. Question number two, please, from Jonathan Westall. Hi Jonathan. It says, out of all the voices you do, which have you found the most challenging to perform and why? Yeah, that's interesting. That is interesting. I th oh, what, it, what, what, what constitutes a challenging voice? One that's just completely out of your range that you have to struggle well, I, to find? I think if it was out of my range, I probably shouldn't be doing it anyway. Yeah. So, you know, it sh there should be someone else there and then together we, you know, yeah. collaborate and do make it work. I, th uh, I think it's usually when... It, it, it's something as important as like the Anderson stuff, or or if you're if you're being brought in to continue the legacy of another character. So like um, late '90s, I got approached to uh, to be the voice of Scooby Doo for over here. Mm -hmm. I, I did Scooby for like years, mm. for, like for Cartoon Network and Warner and lots of stuff. And, and you sort of sit there going, "Well, you know how it sounds, yeah. but you've got to bring it to life." And yeah. it was important that I matched it. Properly, yes, uh, and, and so I, I was like la learning it like a language tape. Yes. I, I put the headphones on, listen to Dom Messick's original you know, going Scooby Dooby Doo, and I go Scooby Dooby, that's wrong, Scooby Dooby, <laughs> Scoo and then eventually go Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> and, like, and like in Shaggy as well, Scoob. Like, it's really freaking me out, Scoob. <laughs> so uh, I, I think usually it's a, out of all the voices you do, which we found the most challenging, it's probably like a, a collection of when you're taking on, when you're continuing the legacy of a character, doing it that way. But um, When it's yeah. more of a faith or recreation. Yeah. You have less license, perhaps. Well, in that well yeah, because because someone has already established what, yeah. they, what the expectation of that character yeah. is. But, but in the same way, you might have someone else play Batman. Yeah, and it's still Batman. Yeah, it's just that it's it's new Batman. Yeah, and so it's like, well, does it is it okay that it changes a bit? It's a different Spider Man. Yeah. It's a different you know, you name it. Now, when did you first realize that you had this gift, this talent, that you could do this? It uh, was it was the last couple of years at school. Uh, so I I there was a, a media course that I nearly didn't do at school because I was the the, the quietest studio, studious one at the front of the class yeah. while everyone else was making noise at the back of the class. Yeah. And this media course, you there was a a sound 
side to it, where you got to use a mixing desk and edit and create stuff. But part of this thing was you had to do this radio show at the school. I nearly didn't take the course because that terrified me. Because mm. it's like, my heroes did that, but it, I, mm. I, I, no, it, it was too much. I, I, and uh, so I was forced to do it. And, and it was like being pushed in a pool and figuring out you can swim really well. Yeah. Because it was all these, I think, it was all these influences that, that are sort of, you, you become like a creative sponge and like given the right place, you wring it out and you realize, oh my God, there's all this there. And, and so um, it, it was that moment when I was at school when I started to almost recreate my favorite like Muppet characters and Stingray characters. Mm. And, and in the same way that Level 42 did, the band, the famous English band, when yes. they started their live shows, yes. I started my radio show with Stand By For Action. <laughs> okay. And five, <laughs> four, three. And, 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 the, and the most important number is two in the Thunderbirds countdown. Right. Because it's five, four, three, two. It's two. <laughs> it's that. A lot of, it's, t it's only tiny. Most people go... Two, yeah. you know, two, but it's two, right. one. It's, <laughs> it's, it's silly, but it's yeah. a little bit. But, so, yeah, so um, nice. that, that's, it started off at school. Thanks to the lovely Mark Silk. He's with us all month. All month. Yeah, wow. the next it's three lucky. podcasts. Oh, yeah, lucky. That's right. So uh, we have a special offer in honour of having Mark Silk with us uh, for the next month. And for this week only, that special offer is, Jamie... 20% off some Stingray stuff. Right. Uh, Monster from the Deep yep. and Operation Ice Cap in yep. hardback form and CD audiobook form. Yep. 20% nice. off those with the code Silky Mark. That's ah. Silky Mark. Lovely. Lovely done. That's at shop.jerryanderson.com. Yeah, I probably should have said that, but yeah, there. Right now. Yeah. Uh, join us next week. We'll have more Voice of the Podstrons. We'll have some more news. We'll have Mark Silk yet again. And we'll be watching part two of Thunderbirds. We might just get the Sidewinder out of that pit. Bit of peril. Yes. See you then. Bye. 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 Five, four, three, two, one, one. Let's get started. Let's go! Spectrum is green. <laughs> uh, what do we think of the new format? That. No, no, it's growing on me. It's I'm growing on me. I'm hard over this. No, it's actually quite nice because I have yeah. to do even less than normal. Yeah. Gosh, well, that's that's fine for you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It is. That. Thanks, okay. Chris. Well, and I'm, I'm not on my own. Exactly. As well, which that's is a right. nice break. It's nice yeah. to have Chris involved. That means I've got to change the end titles, doesn't it? To Chris, move them with Chris Dale and put his name oh, underneath. Yeah. Oh, starring. Yeah. Mm, we might have to wait a couple of months for that, Chris. That's but anyway. Right. Oh, well. to it. See you next week. Bye. Bye. That was an Anderson Entertainment production.